now we have case scenario number 3 which is on agricultural income mr kishan is engaged in the following activities on agricultural land situated in india agricultural land situated in india it is already been clarified that the lands are situated in india there are three activities a b and c one by one will be checking them out he grows saplings or seedlings in a nursery spreading over one acre of land is a total area of land is 5 acre out of that one acre of land is used for growing sapling and seedlings the sale proceeds of which is rupees 5 lakh and cost of plantation is 1 lakh 40000 sale proceeds 5 lakh cost of plantation is 1 lakh 40000 basic operations are not being performed on growing saplings and seedlings now saplings and seedlings will also income from saplings and seedlings grown in a nursery will also be considered as agricultural income and will be eligible for exemption under section 101 even though basic operations that is agricultural operations or primary operations have not been carried out this is according to explanation 1 to section 2 clause 1 section 2 clause 1a which clarifies that even if there are growing of agricultural product through saplings or seedlings grown in a nursery it will still be considered as an agricultural income however the cost of plantation will be allowed to be deducted what will be taxable or what will be exempt will be 5 lakh minus 1 lakh 40000 is equal to the net agricultural income will be 3 lakh 60000 from this activity a which will be exempt under section 101 but amount will be 3 lakh 60000 after deducting expenditure and will not be 5 lakh activity b he grows cotton on 3 acres of land out of total 5 acres 1 acre is gone for saplings and seedling 3 acre is used for cotton 40% of the cotton produces directly sold for rupees 5 lakhs and the cost of cultivation of which is rupees 2 lakh 25000 now this 40% of cotton is directly being sold and the cost of cultivation of the balance 60% of cotton is 3 lakh 37500 and the market value of the same is rupees 6 lakhs now this particular issue activity b will be governed by rule 7 rule 7 what does rule 7 say we will discuss 60% of the cotton 3 lakh 37500 is the cost of cultivation and the market value is 6 lakhs which is used for the further manufacturing of yarn after incurring manufacturing expenses of 1 lakh rupees the yarn is ultimately sold for 8 lakh 50 now this will be divided into two parts according to rule 7 the first part 40% of the cotton is directly being sold so for that 40% of the cotton if you can understand out of 100% of the cotton out of 100% of cotton grown 40% is directly sold and balance 60% of the cotton is converted into yarn so this income from the sale of 40% of the cotton will be directly entirely will be agricultural income will be agricultural income and as far as the 60% which is converted into yarn is concerned some part will be agricultural income and some part will be non agricultural income or rather called as business income business income so, so how, how much will be this 40% income, income 40% from, from direct, direct sale, sale of yarn, yarn. So, so that, that is given, given in first two lines in this activity b it, it is sold, sold for 4 lakh, lakh rupees and the cost of cultivation is 2 lakh 25000 so for 40% which is directly sold the income will be 4 lakhs minus 2 lakh 25000 it will be 1 lakh 75000 1 lakh 75000 is directly agricultural income entirely but as far as this b part is concerned 60% cotton is concerned which is converted into yarn and, and then later on yarn is sold for 8 lakh 50000 this particular income will in, will involved agricultural income also and business income also according to rule 7 uh, while computing agricultural income from the 60% of the cotton converted into yarn whatever is the market value of the yarn whatever is the market value of cotton as on the date of transferring it to factory for converting it into yarn whatever is the market value that will be the sale proceeds so sale proceeds will be 6 lakh rupees which is same as market value and cost of cultivation is 3 lakh 37500 337500 this will be entirely agricultural income 6 lakhs minus 337500 262500 2 lakh 62500 will be agricultural income and as far as business income from sale of yarn is concerned yarn is sold for 8 lakh 50 8 lakh 50 and whatever is the selling price of cotton selling price of cotton 6 lakh rupees that will become purchase price here which is fmv of cotton purchase price of 60% cotton 
will be equal to cotton is not actually being sold it is transferred from farm to factory at what price it is being transferred that is immaterial the market value 6 lakh rupees will be deemed to be the purchase consideration so whatever is the selling price of cotton for computing agricultural income same becomes purchase price for computing business income accordingly business income will be 2 lakh 50000 However there is a further manufacturing cost incurred therefore it will not be 2 lakh 50000 6 lakhs is the cost of cost of purchase of cotton which is an assumed figure plus there is 1 lakh rupees of further manufacturing expenses so i'm writing it as manufacturing due to lack of space i'm not writing manufacturing cost just writing manufacturing balance will be 1 lakh 50 1 lakh 50 will be business income so how much will be agricultural income agricultural income from this activity b will be 40% sale of cotton directly sold and uh, from second activity after converting it into yarn 262500 will be the second income 262500 plus 175000 the total agricultural income from this activity will be 4,37,500 4,30 that is 1,75,000 262500 and this 1,50,000 will be business income which will be chargeable to tax So and so was not the case in case of activity A. Activity A was straightforward. Entire three lakh sixty thousand was agricultural income. Coming to activity C, land measuring one acre. Now out of total five acres of land, one acre is used for agric activity A. Three acres are used for activity B, and one acre is used for activity C. It is let out to Mr. Ramesh on monthly rental of fifteen thousand rupees. which is used by mr ramesh as follows now activity c land remaining 1 acre land is let out to mr ramesh now this particular income 15000 will be considered as agricultural income only if the tenant mr ramesh uses the land for agricultural activity or for storage of agricultural products if mr ramesh uses the land for his residential purpose or any business profession purpose then that much rent received by assc mr kishan will not be considered as agricultural income how much will be agricultural income out of 15000 from activity c only that much which is arising from that much part of this 1 acre land which is used by tenant ramesh for agricultural purpose so it says 50% of the land is used for agricultural purpose 50% will be 7500 per month into 12 months this will be agricultural income 90000 will be the answer 90000 will be agricultural income will be eligible for exemption under section 101 though there are no agricultural operations carried out by assc mr kishan himself but the agricultural operations are being carried out by tenant ramesh that's why and remaining 50% of the land is used for non agricultural purpose again it will be 90000 that is 7500 per month into 12 months this will be business this will be chargeable to tax this will not be eligible for exemption however under which head of income will it be taxable this will be taxable under income from other sources and not under ifhp why why not ifhp because there is only land in order to fall under ifhp there should be building present house property should be present building should be present here there is no building present here only there is a piece of land that's why it cannot go this 90000 the taxable portion has to be offered under ifos or at the max pgbp based on the facts of the case scenario given above choose the most appropriate answer to the following questions number 1 what amount of income arising from activity a would constitute agricultural income in the hands of mr kishan the answer we already calculated it out 1 uh, 3 lakh 60000 here it is from agricultural activity a 360 5 lakhs minus 1 lakh 40 360 360 what institutes answer 3 lakh 60 c our answer is correct okay then next is 3.2 what amount of income from activity b with respect to but with respect to sale of cotton sale of cotton means we are talking about that 40% which is directly sold 40% cotton which is directly sold because remaining 60% cannot be called as sale of cotton remaining 60% is the sale of yarn so they are asking about 40% which is directly sold how much out of that would constitute agricultural income and or business income in the hands of mr kishan so answer is with respect to sale of cotton would constitute agricultural income uh, activity b from direct sale of cotton 262500 will be considered as the agricultural income no uh this one 175000 right hand side right hand side of the screen from 
the income will be one lakh seventy five thousand. This income, two sixty to five hundred and one lakh fifty thousand taxable. That is from yarn, not from cotton. So from cotton, income will be one lakh seventy five thousand. The answer one lakh seventy five thousand as agricultural income. Let's check what's institute's answer for three point two. Their answer is also A one seventy five agricultural income. Our answer is correct. Third three point three. What amount of income from activity B? Again, activity B with respect to sale of yarn. Now they are talking about sale of yarn. That means sixty percent would constitute agricultural income and or business income in the hands of Mr. Kishan. So we know pretty well two lakh sixty to five hundred will be agricultural income. Here we had calculated out, and one lakh fifty thousand will be business income. Two sixty to five hundred and one lakh fifty thousand. Two sixty to five hundred agricultural income, one lakh fifty as business income. Their answer is our answer is B. What's institute's answer? Institute's answer is also B for three point three. Our answer is correct. Now three point four. What amount of income arising from activity C constitutes agricultural income, or otherwise in the hands of Mr. Kishan? So answer total was fifteen thousand per month, which we divided into two parts. Seven thousand five hundred agricultural income, seven thousand five hundred per month will be non-agricultural income. That will be taxable under IFOS. This will be eligible for exemption under Section 10.1. So C is a wrong answer. C is very interesting. Ninety thousand agricultural income. That's correct. And sixty-three thousand charge for taxes income from house property. That is ninety thousand minus thirty percent standard deduction. But this would be the wrong answer. Correct answer will be ninety thousand agricultural income and ninety thousand IFOS. Why ninety thousand will go under IFOS and no standard deduction will be allowed? Because There is no building present out there. D is the correct answer. If building was also there, then sixty-three thousand would have been taxable after thirty percent standard deduction. Our answer is D. Let's check what's institute's answer. Institute's answer is also D. Ninety thousand agri and ninety thousand IFOs. Three point five. Last one. Compute the gross total income of Mr. Kishan for the previous year, twenty to twenty-three, assuming he has no other source of income. So three activities. So how much will be taxable income, gross total income? So answer. That activity A entire income is agricultural income, so that will not be taken into account. Activity B, something is from activity B we have one lakh fifty thousand business income, and activity C we have this fifty percent land use for non-agricultural purpose. Ninety thousand is taxable. What is taxable will be nothing from activity A. Activity A entire three lakh sixty thousand is exempt. Activity B. One lakh fifty thousand is taxable, as we calculated it here, and from activity C, ninety thousand is taxable. Total two lakh forty thousand. Let's check what's institute's answer. What are the options available? Two lakh forty. Answer yes, two lakh forty. How did we get two lakh forty? The one lakh fifty from activity B, and ninety thousand from activity C, and nothing from activity A. Two lakh forty. What's institute's answer? Let's check. Institute's answer is also two lakh forty. With that, this MCQ, this case scenario three comes to an end. See you in the next video with case scenario number three.